let's talk about what it is that, uh, that I'm doing here and why it is that I'm doing it. Uh, when I uh, started uh, getting interested in, in stereos, uh, was, I was about 17, uh, and I started collecting them, and I was collecting the traditional black and white ones, and I loved the black and white ones, and I still do. Uh, when uh, that, um, I about 10 or 12 years ago, uh, my wife gave me a copy of a book on um, Photoshop tips and techniques, and there was two pages in there that <laughs> described how to be able to take and colorize an image using Photoshop, and it's like, I can't believe that was real. And I actually went and played with that. And I was really impressed with what it is that I did. So I started thinking about the old stereos that I had. And I was like, I wonder if I could do that with those. And I actually went out to the Library of Congress and I found that they were downloading them. So basically this was my goal. I wanted to be able to do this. Actually, let me take it out of the sleeve here, make it a little easier to see. I wanted to be able to do this and I wanted to be able to have <laughs> it's doing great, <laughs> no problem. Yeah, the uh, green screen on the green background in there is w doing wonders. We'll take a look at that in a moment. Uh, but I wanted something that would actually be able to have the image uh, in color uh, in there uh, as it may have been if uh, there had been color photography. So I've actually taken and I've done hundreds of these cards in here uh, and produced the physical cards. So what I'm gonna do today is I'm gonna show you the basic techniques and show you how quick and easy it is to be able to do that on here. So let me go ahead and bring up my screen. Let's talk about that on here. So let me come over here and let me just, here is a stereo card. This is actually one that's in the Library of Congress collection. Uh, and this is one uh, that they actually uh, had, uh, that's an original uh, stereo piece in there. Uh, I actually took the originals from the Library of Congress and I downloaded them. So I made my own black and white cards out of there. But again, I wanted something that was in color and that basically this is the goal that I wanted to be able to do. I wanted to be able to have this image as the stereo image in color to be able to see that. And so that's actually what we're gonna look at here is how to be able to produce this. So let's go and po pull this up. I'm gonna pull this up in Photoshop and take a look at it now. For the purposes of what we're looking at here, you notice that a lot of this is actually cluttered uh, by uh, the tools and things that I have on here. So I'm gonna show you some tips to be able to help out with some of those things. And by the way, everything that I'm showing you, you can do within Photoshop. Uh, you can also do within GIMP, uh, which is a, a new in image uh, manipulation uh, program. It's a free tool that will allow you to be able to do these things. So you don't need to pay for a tool. There are free ones in there to be able to do that. I am gonna show you with Photoshop because uh, that I've had a license for that for a number of years. I actually have an older license in there, but it will do everything that we need to be able to do in here for our demonstration. So let's take a look at what it is that I have. Right now, as I mentioned, my tools are crowding my screen here a bit. So I wanna be able to stop crowding the screen. I'm just gonna pre press tab, now I can see it. So what I'm seeing in here is uh, the, uh, the image. I actually like to be able to view it in cross view because I can cross view. Obviously, if I wanted to be able to have that as a free view, I could uh, show it that way to be able to do it that way uh, as well. So I'm gonna view it in cross view just because it's more comfortable for me. Now, I wanna be able to zoom in on this image and to be able to get to some of this detail. And we want to be able to take a look at this. So let's actually look at this and we're gonna go ahead and zoom in. Uh, let me come over here and we're gonna zoom in on the left one and the right one. I'm just gonna focus in right on Sherman's head here. Let's do the same thing over here. I'm gonna zoom this one in and let's bring this over. Again, my tools are blocking the way. So I'm just gonna go ahead and press the tab key on my keyboard. That will unblock it. And now if you're able to see it, let me actually try this on my own here. Yeah, I can see it uh, in there uh, as a cross view in there for that. Obviously you may need to adjust that, and move that around a little bit. Show you another tip for this. If you do have the images in there and you're able to see the left and right in there for that, if you uh, have it so that you have the hand tool, uh, that is the one here uh, that allows you to be able to go and to be able to move around the image. If you have that hand tool on there and you hold the shift key down on your keyboard and you click on the image, either the left or the right, it doesn't matter. You can pick it up and you can move them around and it will allow you to be able to move both images simultaneously so they always stay in sync with each other. A great way to be able to just get to the area that we want. We're going to focus on one of these and I'm going to show you how easy it is to actually be able to go in and to be able to colorize these. So with that, what I'm going to do is that I'm going to go in here and we will actually just go over here and let's actually take this one and make this one full screen. Let me see, can I get my controls out of the way for, let me see here. My, um, 
sorry, but my Zoom uh, controls keep coming up and popping up over where I need to be. So I'm just going to move them out away for a bit. And then I'm going to maximize this one. So we're just seeing one of these images in here. So here is the image that we're going to work with. And what I want to do is just for demonstration purposes, I'm going to turn off the color and now we have it as a black and white image. So I need to be able to work with that. So what do I need to do in order to be able to make this happen in here? The first thing I'm going to do is that I'm going to go in there and I'm going to identify the colors that I need to be able to use. So to do that, what I'm going to do is actually I'm going to pull up uh, one that I actually have created uh, to be able to help make a palette for it. I do have some more advanced techniques. I'm going to show you some simple ones. So in here, I actually, uh, let me move this over a little bit. I uh, actually have a photograph of my wife. Uh, hopefully she's upstairs watching me. <laughs> she said she was, uh, but I, uh, I'm using this because I actually like her skin tone a lot. Uh, and I want to use that to be able to be part of this particular image. And so I want to add that in here. So I'm going to go here and I'm just going to sample the, uh, the image wherever looks good for me. And then it's going to show me the color that I'm seeing in here. So that's the color that I'm going to use. And now I'm going to go back over into my image and I'm going to add a new layer in here. So I'm going to go here. I'm going to just go up to layer, new layer. By the way, I do have some more advanced techniques. I'm just going to show you a very, very simple, very easy way to be able to do this. I'm not going to get into a lot of the advanced fancy stuff. Uh, we're just going to keep it pretty simple in here to be able to do that. So I'm going to go in here and I'm going to pick my paintbrush. And I'm just going to go in here uh, to be able to start coloring this in. Now, as I do this, by the way, let's actually take a look at what I'm doing. I'm using actually a, a tablet in here. So I'm using a pin. You can use a mouse. So if you want to use a mouse to be able to do that, not a problem. You can do that. There are some advantages to using the pin, though, uh, in here. Uh, the advantages with the pin is that when I go in here, that I can, for example, uh, if I'm using the mouse uh, in here and I start to be able to draw, I'm drawing a thick line. If I'm doing it with a pin, I can do something that is very thin and then press it down to be able to do it thicker and thicker when I need it. So in my case, what I'm going to do is that I'm just going to go and I'm going to outline the area that I need to be able to do it. And then I'm just going to go in here and I'm going to fill this in. And then I'm going to backfill the color in here for what it is that I'm missing. Then I'm going to do the same thing for the other areas. Now, don't worry that I'm covering it up right now. We're going to fix that in just a moment. Right now, I just want to get that solid layer of color down for what it is that I'm doing. So those are the areas that I'm looking for. Now, over here in my layer channel, I had added a new layer into there for that. I'm going to take that and I'm going to convert that over. Uh, there are three ones that I can use in here. I can use soft light. I can use color and I can use overlay. Those will help me in different ways. So if I use the color one in here, uh, that it's a little harsh for what it is that I'm doing, uh, perhaps not the best choice in this particular example. Overlay, yeah, not quite what I'm looking for in there. And then if I use soft light, I'm going to get a much more realistic. So that's more of what it is that I'm looking for. Uh, one of those three is going to be able to do what you need typically for that. I'm going to go in here and I'm going to do a couple of things uh, in here. Uh, I'm going to go in, actually just make this a little bit smaller. And I'm just going to just erase some a little bit from the eyes in there. And then I need to go and start doing the next color. So I did the first color in here. And I use that to be able to get that off of my wife's skin. I need to be able to do other things in here. So we're going to focus on just this area that we're looking at. I'm going to do the hat. We're going to do his beard and hair. Uh, we're going to do his uniform in there. And uh, we're going to do uh, the gold uh, buttons and uh, the gold area on here. So those are the areas that we're going to focus on. So I'm going to come back over here. And I actually have pulled those up. I have those available in here. Uh, so I have uh, the principal ones that we need to be able to do. I, I can see the gold buttons, uh, the uniform. Uh, I uh, pulled an image of a woman uh, with red hair because uh, that Sherman happens to be a redhead. So I need red hair to be able to match that. And we're going to use this to be able to match those type of colors for what it is that I need. Then after that, what I do typically is that I will make, and let me go just go ahead and close this, uh, I will make a, uh, a palette in here that will have the colors that I typically use uh, in here to be able to do that. Uh, so in this case, I'm actually creating those uh, palettes in here uh, just one at a time to be able to pick those. And I'll show you how to be able to do that so we can do that. But typically, I would go in there and I would actually just uh, do them uh, on there. 
uh, as I'm going in uh, and uh, just have a palette. In fact, I have, um, this is a simple palette that I have in here that has maybe 20 colors. Uh, the palette that I use uh, for most of the stuff that I do commercially and stuff uh, has about 80 or 90 colors in there uh, for that. So I actually have uh, a lot of them in there to be able to do that. I'm just gonna go here and make a brand new layer. Uh, you can name this if you want. So we can say uh, this one is here if I wanna be able to do that. And then we're just gonna start painting that one in just like we did before. I'm gonna just resize this a little bit and we're going to do it. Now we can do it like we did before and we can st uh, color it in there, or I can actually start to move it over. I know that soft light worked well. I'm gonna move it over to soft light and I'm gonna start painting it in with soft light rather than painting it in with the regular. So I'm just gonna do that. And uh, we're just gonna go kind of quick just to be able to do this. Typically uh, though, to be able to do this, isn't gonna take me much longer than I'm demonstrating it here. To be able to do this full image probably would take me a couple of hours to be able to do it. Uh, it does take a little bit of time. Now, as I'm looking at that, to me, it looks a little bit harsh. It looks like that I have a little more uh, of uh, the red uh, in, in there than I'm really looking for. So I'm actually just gonna soften this down a little bit. Let's just bring that a little bit down so that it's a little bit uh, more natural to be able to do that. And then we're gonna move on to the next one. So I'm gonna do the same thing in here for that. I have the uniform in here. I can pick that up uh, from here. So let's actually just go find a place in the uniform. It's gonna pick up the color that I want. I'm gonna come back over here and we're going to repeat the same thing again. So we're gonna go over here and we're going to create another layer. This is gonna be for the uniform and the hat. If I can spell it doesn't really matter since I've actually already done this one. This is just demonstration. So I'm gonna go in here, make this slightly larger in here, and then I'm just gonna color this one in here. And again, I can do those so it is showing the full color or I can do it as a soft light depending on what it is uh, my preferences. I'm just gonna quickly move these. I'll show you something in here. One of the things that I hear a lot when I talk to people about this is it's like, well, I can't do that colorization because uh, I can't even draw a straight line. So how would I do that? First off, when you're doing images in here, most of what you're wanting to do is not a straight line. Mostly you're wanting to be able to draw in curves in there. So a straight line doesn't really matter in there, but I'm gonna show you a trick for straight lines here in a moment. So I'm just gonna color these in and I'm not gonna worry about the buttons. I'm just gonna go down as far as what we can see. Obviously there's more, I'd need to scroll down, but just for quick demonstration purposes, because we only have a short time in here, I'm just gonna do just what I'm seeing on the screen. So I'm gonna go in there, I'm gonna fill that one in. I'm gonna go in here, take up the slack for what it is that I'm looking for. Now, I wanna change this over to soft light like we did before. Let's take a look at that. As I'm looking at this, not quite what I'm looking for. I'm looking for something a little more dynamic. Let's see what we can do. I'm gonna go up to layer. I'm gonna to go to new adjustment layer and I'm gonna do hue and saturation. I'm gonna add that as a clipping mask. What it's going to do is it's just going to focus on just the area that I colorized below that. So I can now saturate this and bring the color up on that and then darken that up a bit. And now let's actually take a look at that before and after. Now we're starting to see some noticeable differences in there. I do notice in here that I do need to be able to get the hair again for that. Let's actually change this here. Let's bring this up. Let's get back to the hair there. I forgot the hair behind at the back of his head. Let's actually do those real quick. There we go. Put it back into soft light. And bring that back down to where we want it. All right, now we need to be able to do the buttons. So let's go over there again. We're gonna pick up the buttons on here and we'll do the buttons. And that's about as far as we'll go today. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, get a color for the buttons. Come back over here. We'll go back in, layer, new layer. And we'll do brass. So the brass area that we're going to do is actually, I want it on top of the uniform there. And I don't want, Actually, let me undo this, I made a mistake. Let me put that right here. Okay, that's where I want it. There we go. And I'm going to do this one. I'll just do this one real quick. I'm gonna do these guys here 
to be able to do them. And I need this area on the outside. The stars should be white. We're going to take care of that in a moment because they're now actually colored blue because I just colored the whole thing in. So I'm going to take care of that. So I highlighted the whole area on here. Now here's a little trick on here. I'm going to take these. I'm going to hold the control key down and I'm going to hit uh, the color there and actually will outline the area that I want. And then I can actually just go into the area for the uniform and then I can erase those so that now those are actually uh, not colored in. And then I can go in here and go back to the one that I have here. Just, uh, and then I can change this. This is one area where actually using uh, a, something other than soft light is probably going to work. You notice here when I put uh, this in, not very bright, not very vibrant in here. I'm actually going to choose color in this case uh, in here. So let me go to color. And now I'm seeing color in here for that. And it's picking up the brass really well. I need to do one last thing in here for that, which is to go over here and to be able to just open this up a little bit. And I'm just going to clean this up a little bit just to be able to get them a little bit brighter because I had uh, just colorized the whole thing in there for that. And then we're going to repeat that same thing for the rest of these in here for that. So that is the area that I'm wanting to be able to show you in here for that. I know that um, actually I, I did this very, very quickly in here uh, to be able to see that uh, you're kind of getting an idea of what it is that uh, is going on in there. Uh, uh, so what we're looking at in here, uh, let me actually just show you a few more uh, techniques in here. I'm actually, uh, this is about as far as I was actually planning on going with this one. And you can see I could continue that in here by just going over and uh, using uh, the uh, the various ones that I had in here uh, to be able to pick up uh, some of those kind of things and to be able to do those additional colors in here uh, for that. So let's actually do uh, one more thing in here. I want to show you what we can do for the sky. The sky is one of those areas that is really odd uh, when you first look at it. So I do have a color in here for the sky, and I'm going to go ahead and pick that up, and I'm going to show you a simple technique in here to be able to make this look right. So let's actually get back over into Photoshop, we'll go back into our image, and we're going to go and just resize this so we can see the whole thing. I want to make the sky area for everything that we have up here and to be able to make that uh, look good. Let's actually go and color that in. I'm going to bring it up here to be able to see that. And we're going to go over here. I'm going to increase that a little bit. And let's actually start coloring that in. So I'm going to color it in right here. Oops, I see my problem. I need to go and create a new layer. I forgot to do that. That is going to be very important. And we're going to use that in just a moment. So let me bring it up to the top. Put it right there. Let's go ahead and do that. New layer, sky. And then I'm going to just color this one in. So let's hide those tools so we can see this. And I'm just going to do this very quickly in here to be able to do that. When we get done with this, this actually, what I did to be able to get the color for the sky, I actually just took a photograph of the sky uh, and uh, then I sampled an image so I know that I was getting the actual color layer. It's actually getting sky color, so I know that it's right. And I'm going to show you something in here. And it's like, OK, when you did that, it doesn't look like sky. And I'm going to show you how to be able to fix it uh, from what it is uh, to what it should be. Uh, so we're just going to go ahead and take care of that real quick. So in here, let's actually do this. And we're going to take care of just this extra area. I'm just going to do this real quick in here. This area is not actually going to be that important. We'll see that in a minute. Uh, right now, it would look really off. So I'm just going to fix that real quick. Let me do that. And let's finish up the rest of this right, right quick. And our final area there. OK, now. We know that we sampled it from the sky, but this does not look like sky. It's not looking the way we want it. We know there's a problem, and we don't know what it is. Let's actually take a look at what the problem is here. So in here, I have the color for the sky in here for that. What we need to be able to do is we need to be able to go in, and we need to be able to have uh, this 
in here with a blending option in here for that. So we're going to go into our blending option and we're going to go in this case to a gradient overlay. And in the gradient overlay, we're going to choose the preset default, which is the top one there for that. And then we're going to uh, do an OK on here and an OK again. What that did was it did it from the dark blue area that we started with, in this case, over to a white. So it gradiented it so that it looks that uh, looks correct. So if I uh, uncheck this, you'll notice that I have a blue sky, but it doesn't look right. If I check that, then it actually looks more like a sky with darker at the top and lighter at the bottom in there to be able to do that. Now, I did promise you a tip in there if you want to be able to go in and to be able to uh, do a straight line. So let's actually do that. I'm going to go and add in one more line in here for that. And we'll do that for, uh, let's do that for wood. I do have some straight lines in here behind him uh, in there, and I want to be able to follow that line. Now, I've actually been doing this long enough uh, that it's actually reasonably easy for me to be able to go in there and to be able to just follow that line. And I could sit here uh, with my uh, with my tools in here. Uh, and actually, let's go over. We need to sample our woods uh, color first. So let's go over here. There we go. And I'm just going to sample the wood color. And we're going to pick up wood here. Then we're going to come back over here. And I can go in here. And I've been doing this long enough that I could actually just track this and to be able to do that very easily on there to be able to do it. Not a big deal uh, when you've been doing it practice and you practice. But when you're first getting started on this and you need to, uh, a little hand to be able to do that, how can you manage this? Because uh, straight lines are one of those areas that is really, really daunting. Uh, let me just move this on out of the way just make it a little easier. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my mouse on here and I'm going to resize this a little bit. So I'm going to use, uh, just bring it down a little bit in here uh, to be able to see what it is that I want to be able to do. And I'm going to click where I want to start. I'm just going to click one time in here and then I'm going to slide over to where I want the end to be. Uh, let me move these guys out of the way so we can see the end here a little bit. And I want the end to be right over here. So I'm going to hold the shift key down on my keyboard and I'm going to click on it and then it will draw the line for me. So if I look at this in here, I've now drawn that whole line all the way along with just uh, about three clicks on there. Click for the left, a click, for, uh, actually two clicks, a click for the left, a shift key, and then a click for the right. And it drew the uh, entire line in there. So very, very easy to be able to do that type of thing. So uh, the, as we're looking at that in there, uh, that is uh, my presentation. Uh, I'm trying to keep it to the time we have. Uh, we have a few minutes left. If there's questions or things, I'd be happy to be able to answer those. Uh, if, if there's uh, anything that you want to see, uh, any additional things, uh, just uh, feel free to let me know as well. So uh, Rick, have we got questions or things that I can help with there? Rick, I'm not hearing you. You're muted. Uh, OK, so I'm. I pop back. Um, we can take questions in the chat. Uh, we can give a we can give a round of applause for your uh, exciting. Oh, thank you. Yes. Uh, where is the audience? There we go. All right. <laughs> yeah, out there. Uh, so yeah, if anybody has any any questions, uh, or if you want to raise your hand, you can hit the little icon uh, in the participants window, and that'll bubble you to the top, and we can grab you. Uh, someone said privately, are you related to that soldier? Uh, that is actually General Sherman. So no, I actually have done uh, soldiers that I was, I'm related to three soldiers that fought during the Civil War. All of them were privates and none of them were generals. Uh, I have done one of them that I have a period image of him. Uh, I don't happen to have it available just to pop up on the screen at the moment, uh, but um, uh, that uh, not related to General Sherman, no. All right. Anyone else? Yeah, David, when you use that gradient tool for the sky, it yes, works if the, if the sun is at that horizon. If it's on the opposite side you know, behind you, you might want it dark at the bottom. Can you flip that radiant uh, tool yes. over? So what you do to be able to do that, uh, let me go ahead and bring my screen back up. I'll show you uh, what you do. It's actually, you're not going to flip the gradient. Well, actually you can, you can flip the gradient. But what you're going to do in here, uh, the easiest way to be able to do that, <clears throat> And my screen, of course, wants to be able to hold. Uh, there we go. Uh, you just change which one that you have on the top. So if I want it to go from dark to light, I, I would set, uh, and I need to be able to, 
uh, just change this for my sky so I can pick up my sky color here. Uh, so let me just put it back to sky. So if I wanted to be able to go from uh, the top to be dark and the bottom to be light, uh, I'll uh, have it uh, blue and white here. If I wanted to be able to go the other way, then I would do it here. Uh, when I'm in the blending mode to be able to do that, I can adjust that straight in the blending mode. So if I go back over into the blending mode uh, in here for that, inside of the blending mode, uh, there is an option in here for the gradient. Uh, to be able to do a reverse. So you just pick the reverse and it would do the same thing. If you if you got it the wrong way to be able to start with, you can just do the reverse and fix it. All right, thank you. Other questions? There was a question where they asked was, the, what the free, uh, the other piece of software was that you used. Yep, that... G-I-M-P, new image, G-N-U, new image manipulation program. It's a free tool. It will do everything that you can do within Photoshop, does the layers, it does all of the uh, blending modes, uh, everything that I've shown you in there. Uh, the interface is a little bit different, uh, but it actually will uh, open a Photoshop file. So if you have a Photoshop file to be able to start with, or you need to be able to save it in that format, form format you can do it. Free tool. There are two somewhat related questions in the chat. Uh, okay. One is, do you need to colorize each side separately, or can you duplicate? And the Great other question. is, can you talk about can you talk about how the grayscale determines the shade of the color? Great question. So uh, let's actually talk about uh, left and right. Uh, sadly, uh, that you do have to do them separately because that uh, because they are stereo images, there are going to be differences. So, for example, uh, that if I'm looking at the images here uh, of uh, Sherman with the horse in here, uh, where the horse lines up in relationship to the cannon, uh, because it's farther back in the image, uh, there'll be more or less of it uh, appearing, and because of that, you cannot uh, just uh, pick up the color from one side. They will not match. Uh, do not try it. Uh, I've uh, spent uh, hours and hours trying to be able to get it to do it, and it's actually just much faster to be able to colorize it. Uh, what does the color tell you? Uh, that it tells you whether it's darker or lighter. It's not going to tell you what color it is uh, based on the grayscale. Uh, there are some programs that will do uh, an interpretation based on the grayscale and it will try to produce something. Uh, there's still a work in progress. Uh, you're going to be able to get somewhat of a, of a colorized image, but th that uh, looking at that and then comparing that, uh, for example, to like the one that I have over uh, my head and my background here, uh, you're not going to be able to get to that level. Uh, actually, let's do this. Let's actually turn the ones here that I just played with, and let's put it back to my full color one uh, that I have on here. And you're not going to be able to get to this level uh, using the colorized ones, uh, uh, the colorization programs. You need to be able to do this by hand to be able to get there. Maybe there someday, but it's not there today. OK, uh, so we had another question. Someone wanted to know the name of your book. Uh, sure. Uh, it's, uh, actually, do I have a copy of it here? I thought that I had a copy with me. Yes, I do. They also want to know the, the free Photoshop. Yeah, so the free Photoshop one is uh, what I had mentioned in there, uh, 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 new image manipulation tool, GIMP, G-I-M-P. Uh, and then uh, this is my book. It's uh, 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 Restoring and Tinting Vintage Images is the name of the book. It's available on Amazon. You can pick it up there. I wish that we were live. Uh, you know, I do offer them for sale live in there uh, for that and uh, give a discount over what they are selling them for on Amazon. Uh, but um, it is what it is here today. So uh, that's what it is. And I just put the, the link to GIMP. It is uh, GIMP.org. And that's in the chat if anyone needs to get it. Thank you, Eric. Appreciate that. All right. Uh, that is about my time on there. So I want to turn it back over uh, so that we can move on. And uh, thank you for uh, your uh, viewing this here today. If you do have any questions for me, uh, you can reach me, David at Civil War in 3D, uh, or you can just visit my website out there. Uh, lots of examples of these stereo cards and things on my site uh, if you want to be able to go uh, and to be able to pick some of those up. Uh, or if you just want to ask a question, uh, it's got our phone number, it's got our email address. You can just pick me up from there as well. Thank you. Appreciate it.